Today is the day and we are going big. It's about time I got serious with the Blood Angels painting journey and introduced some proper power to the army. And we're gonna do that in the way of a close combat dreadnought. I'll look to entertain you along the way as I build and paint the model, but I'm already pinging because this is a model that I've wanted ever since I was a little kid. So you'll have to excuse me as I skip the pleasantries and we just dive straight in. One of my goals on this model is to have a more dynamic pose to complement the fact that this is a close combat dreadnought so that it's not standing flat footed and just waiting to be shot at. However you build your model, you'll end up with a bunch of spare parts that you can use when creating your next model or base. I play around with different spare parts and use post attack to get an idea of where I can position different elements. This video is brought to you by this t-shirt from Into the AM. I'll tell you a bit later on about how you can get your hands on this shirt and others like it while supporting the channel. Now I'd love to tell you that I nail it or even just hide all the angles from you at the end, but if I make a mistake, then it's a great opportunity for lots of people to learn from it. I picture that my dreadnought will be tucked in nice and low and charging towards the enemy, even springing off of terrain and battlefield debris in order to get into close combat. But as you'll see throughout the build of this model, he ends up being tilted back slightly. This is visually appealing in one sense because it opens up the chest and shows off the custom parts and the painting effort that I've put in. But it also kind of makes him look a little clumsy rather than the agility death machine. That's a cool rock band name, by the way. So what can you do different? Before you commit glue to model, take a bit more time and use the same post attack to perform a dry run on the pose to make sure you're 100% happy with it. Time to find out how this sponging method of painting will go on a larger model. Previously I've been painting smaller infantry size, so I'm getting a bit nervous. I'm excited to include dreadnoughts in my army, obviously, because they look fantastic and some are iconic to Blood Angels, but I think this also epitomises the Space Marines' commitment to service. My Blood Angels force is operating in a prolonged campaign of war with reduced numbers, so each Marine will need to be prepared to continue serving the Emperor and slaying his enemy, even once they've been grievously wounded. And that right there is such a great piece of their unique story. Picture Dreadnoughts as acting as a life support system, a sarcophagus, and also a distributor of pain. A grim, dark, triple threat, if you will. Dreadnoughts can slumber for centuries at a time due to the incredible strain this places on the warrior contained within, and they are awoken when they are needed the most. So it should be of no surprise to see Dreadnoughts pulled from their crypts for this crusade. So even though the chassis of a Redemptor Dreadnought looks quite similar to that of an Invicta Tactical Warsuit, treat the Dreadnought as being a tomb for a fallen Space Marine who is now simply shriveled biological components sloshing around in life-giving fluids, whereas the Warsuit is a set of armour piloted by a selected Space Marine. Fun fact, Shriveled Biological Components is also my handle on several different dating apps. See you there. Dreadnoughts are highly revered by their Space Marine brothers given their strength and wisdom, and even in a less visually appeasing state, would surely be benefiting the morale and the will to fight of those around them. Oh boy, this red armour is looking exactly as I hoped it would. There's so much space on those armour panels for the effect to look cool. And now I'm pretty hyped about painting some more Space Marine vehicles. Imagine this look on an Impulsor. Ooh, or a Repulsor. Woof! I've decided to go with the bone colour wings for the chest rather than gold. The model will have plenty of gold to come in other areas. 
A great way to make your Warhammer model stand out from the crowd is to hunt around online for some custom parts that have been created by talented designers. I found this Blood Angels Redemptor upgrade kit on a site called Archie's Forge. If you're after your own, I'll put a link below so that you can get it. Often you buy parts as 3D STL files that you print yourself, but in this case, these are ones that are printed for you in high quality resin and then posted out. These parts were supplied fully cleaned and didn't require any washing, which is great, but frustratingly means that I couldn't create another saucy hot tub scene. I contemplated glowing blue talons, but decided that there was something more horrifying about just having rusty talons. Dreadnoughts are traditionally known for having an armament of one big, heavy, long-range weapon, and on the other side, a close combat weapon, which means that they're well balanced for multiple roles. I'll mention this again because for us Australians, you often need some trade secrets or a special lurk to be able to get some affordable Games Workshop models. Emperor is the online store where I've been buying my models for years. They are up to 30% off the prices listed on Games Workshop's website, and if that's not enough, you also accumulate loyalty points. So when the index cards were released, I cashed in some points for a $50 gift card and treated myself to another box of plastic crack. The Blood Angels Furioso Dreadnought is known for being a close combat beast by trading the long range weaponry for a second melee option. You can select between Blood Fists and Blood Talons, which are cool names, but currently stat wise, I'm pretty sure they play the same as Power Fists and Lightning Claws. I've equipped mine with the Blood Talons because I think that would look terrifying if that thing was charging at you. But you do you, and if you're not sure on what you'd like, then why not use magnets and you could have both. Then there's the Death Company Dreadnought. I consider this, but I'm secretly thinking that when my army is established and looking chunky, that I batch paint a Death Company attachment with a couple of squads and a Dreadnought. How does that sound? Having your decaying remains adorned in Dreadnought armor is one way to look good, but it's no guarantee that you're going to feel comfortable. How slick was that transition? I'm secretly hoping that you're looking for a way to support the channel and you're ready to treat yourself. I've been wearing the graphic tees from Into the AM recently and honestly, they're great. My wardrobe is full of graphic t-shirts, but I can never remember which online stores have the good ones and which have the tacky ones. These though, these are the good ones. They're comfortable, affordable, and it's over to you on whether or not you like the styles. For me, they happen to be my taste, so I'm sold on them. You can use my link below to head across to Into the AM, where you can find three graphic t-shirts for $61.95, and if you use my code BADGER10, you'll get a further 10% off your order, and you'll be supporting the channel financially. We are on the approach to the holiday season, and these would be a great gift for someone, or again, you should just treat yourself. I want my Dreadnought to look good, but some days I want to look good as well. Segway back. If they are so highly regarded and well maintained, why is this Dreadnought going to be covered in battlefield damage and weathering from the environment? A Tech Marine was available to maintain and prepare the Dreadnoughts for combat, however, a number of factors means they now need to adapt on the fly. This war is being lost and Tech Marines are scarce or deployed. The Dreadnought is without rest or opportunity for repair, as it's constantly engaged in combat. Even if reprieve was granted, resources are in such short supply and are being allocated to areas deemed critical by higher command. That's why this Dreadnought was originally decorated with ornate golden designs and purity seals. However, now they carry the blood and debris from their combats, or in the case of purity seals, have almost all been torn away. I should probably address the elephant in the room and talk about why I'm using the Redemptor Dreadnought model and not the original Furioso. To me, it's an obvious decision, but as I'm discovering from creating these videos, I'm often wrong. 
My opinion is that the older model reminds me of my youth and makes me feel warm and fuzzy, but for this army, I want a larger, more intimidating model. I also feel that I have some more wiggle room with customising the Redemptor body to create my own looking Furioso. Part of me also thinks that it will be more entertaining for you to see me stumble through trying to convert this Redemptor into a Furioso, rather than you seeing me paint a model that you've been seeing get painted for the last 20 years. What is important though is to understand that this model is larger and on a larger base, which changes how the game rules apply. There are tactical advantages to occupying more space on the board, and being bigger means that if I'm covered in guns, it will probably open up more fields of fire. The people I play against follow the rule of cool, and we can see the writing on the wall that slowly each of these older models are being increased in size. So we're happy with custom changes like this, but check with your opponent and also check with any tournament organiser if you plan on attending an event. I've had this army painter pretend barbed wire for as long as I can remember, and I've always been meaning to use it. Today is that day. I'm terrible with naming the important models in my army, so I call upon your wise assistance again. Can you help me create a unique name for this Blood Angels Furioso Dreadnought? If you do think of a fitting name, then I'll have one of those cool little base plates made to identify them. But I'm not going to allow anything crazy like brother shriveled biological components. Come on people, that's too long. This is Blood for the Blood God technical paint mixed with German Uhu glue and dragged from talon to talon to look as though he's just torn some enemies apart with his weapons. Once dry, I add some gloss to them to help them pop out even more. Shall we take a look at how the model turned out? I'm so happy with this. If I could pick a different pose, I would, but my painting has come so far over the last couple of years and I'm proud of what I've created this time around. This has inspired me to jump straight back into more Blood Angels models. I have Outrider bikes and some Infernus Marines on the shelf, and I'm waiting for the new Assault Marines before I start on my jump pack inventory and characters. So what do you recommend? What would you like to see painted next? Thank you so much again to everyone for watching. If you've just found the Blood Angels army journey and you want to see the videos, here's the complete playlist of them here. Or here's another video you may enjoy. Please check out Into the AM and consider picking up some t-shirts. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. I think that was it. Which means, we're done.